As the search continues after California's deadliest fire occurred, owners are still looking for their missing pets. As the fire literally burned paradise to the ground, more than 50 cats were able to make their way from what's left of the town to a place that could provide food, water, and shelter. The organization I work for is Field Haven Feline Center. We're funded by a national organization called Alley Cat Allies out of Maryland. So they're funding um, our part of it, plus we're our own nonprofit, of course, to get our own, our own donations and things. There's about 140, 160 feeding stations at this point around the two towns. So, and they're basically cat food, where they put cat food out, put game, game cameras, and watch the cats on the cameras that are coming there. And they're looking for owners will call us, or call Jen, and say, you know, I want you to go out and look for my cat. They may see their cat. They may put their own camera out and see their cat. And then the trappers go out and put traps at those feeding stations. I've hugged so many people as they walk through the door you, that you could see, they walk through, they have a phone, you know right away that there's, they're looking for a cat and they'll just like melt. And you know, they start crying and you start hugging them and you know why you're hugging them because they're, 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 they lost their baby. In addition of going door to door and following orders, volunteers also used social media, flyers, and radio ads to reunite missing cats with their loved ones. When you look at Paradise, and I'm just going to show you a snapshot of Paradise, uh, those are the missing cats, just in Paradise. So if that gives you a screenshot of just, I mean, it's, it's quite a statement. Still missing. Yeah, and you can click on every one of those buttons and it'll bring up that cat's information. For the past four months, both teams have been working around the clock to reunite people with their beloved pets. The one thing is with, with a disaster this size, you have to trap on a massive scale, so it requires a lot of volunteers. So that's the big thing. And, and what my team tries to do is we build local teams at every fire. So we come to the area and we build local teams, people who are vested in the outcome who will stay, because we, like we like to try and be there for a year after the fire. We had a cat that was a little bit aggressive, huge, just enormous cat. And when the owners came to look, and they didn't know if it was the right cat or not, but so I could see into the cage. So I was watching the cat, and the owner's coming in this way. He can't see his cat yet, but he started talking, and the cat's eyes got huge. And all of a sudden, the cat started to talk and he's yelling at his owner, where have you been all these months? And it was just like, they hadn't even seen each other, but as soon as he started talking, then the guy just burst into tears. It was such a great reunion because it was all just, you knew right away you had the right match. A difficulty for both Joy and Jennifer is when someone calls in or steps by and provides a description of their missing cat. This is the hard part, is we have cats that come in that are unsocial. We have to figure out are they on social because they're scared, they're frightened, they were somebody's, you know, people have very shy cats in their homes, or are they feral, or they were community cats. So I don't have, there's no real recipe to it, it's just our experience. We're very, at Field Haven, we are very behavior oriented. We do a lot of specialty training and behavior. I call in specialist, behavior specialists when I need to on certain cats. I just had my veterinarian in our um, in our team, our program manager, were up here yesterday because I wanted their input on a few cats. So this one we've deemed that um, he's been here for a while. This cat is actually going to go back, be released back to their their feral colony. Everybody is spayed, neutered, and microchipped vaccinated before they go back to their feral colony. This one just came in um, two nights ago. Come here, sweetie. And she's very friendly, but she's still a little bit shy. I mean, she's just a little bit, this is, a, this is an example of a cat that um, I would say is a little bit traumatized still. And I bet you within a day or two, she'll be right up here at the front of the cage. Because of both teams, many people who have given up hope in ever finding their cat have been reunited. This tops all of the fires I've ever worked. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just so big and people had so many cats. It's not just like you've got your one or two indoor cats. People had populations of outdoor community cats. I mean, the, the numbers are staggering. This is, this is so much a people mission. I mean, it's about the animals, it's rooted in the animals, but it's about people. For Media Milwaukee, I'm Dimitri Panagiotopoulos.